now okay. it's, uh, it's my privilege to uh, introduce my good friend, <laughs> Melvin Ishmael John Smith Johnson, who is the artistic director for Drawn Stage Qumran, which is a drama troupe made up of homeless and formerly homeless and nearly homeless individuals from the Skid Row community. And, uh, and he's going to speak to us a bit about uh, homeless veterans and also do a performance for us, a uh, monologue from the show Nailhead. Thank you, Patrick. Hey, may the peace and blessings of a life-given creative spirit be upon you and upon your family. Uh, my name is Melvin Ishmael Johnson, as Catherine said, with Drama Stage Qumran, uh, which is a, a, a theater company located in the downtown uh, Skid Row area. Our mission statement is to utilize community theater to impact the violence in the individual home, school, and community. And it's an honor to uh, speak at any interfaith, uh, 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 how can I say it? Any interfaith yeah. event <laughs> gathering uh, that you have because uh, the latter part of our name, Qumran, come where it comes from, uh, this was a home of uh, the Messiah Jesus, John the Baptist, Mary, Lazarus. This is where they found the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls at in 1947, which is probably uh, the oldest scripture that you have in the existence uh, today. And not only that, when I think of interfaith, uh, uh, the name to me to connect Judaism, Christianity, and Islam is Abraham because all of them trace, uh, uh, they, they can trace their roots back to Abraham. So when it comes to uh, the homeless, the veterans, homeless veterans, I think it's gonna take a unified front of these three major uh, religions to, um, to make that happen. What I would like to say, now I am a veteran. I'm a Vietnam veteran, six, 1969 to 71. Can I tell you my age uh, <laughs> now? And not only am I a veteran, but I come from a family of uh, veterans. My, uh, out of a family of uh, seven males and two females, six of us served in the military. Three in the Army, two in the Air Force, and I served in the uh, United States Marine Corps. So this is why this is such an important issue to me. And not only that, since we've been working in the Skid Row area, one of the things that we notice is how many veterans that's living in the streets. See, and we're going to talk about that in a little while when we do our uh, monologue. And uh, so what we try to do with Drama Stage School Run, we, we feel that uh, uh, people talk so much about the problems, that everybody knows the problems, because it's amplified. You can read it in the paper and all that kind of stuff. What we try to talk about is solutions. Solutions. What is the solutions to the homeless problem? Now here's what we come up with. Because we talk to other homeless, people who have been homeless, homeless veterans, and we want to get their uh, opinions on what do, we, what do they think it takes to solve the homeless problem. And here's where we at. I think the first step in solving the homeless problem is make the homeless problem the homeless veteran problem. That's the starting point. By making it the homeless veterans problem, you put it on the shoulders of the United States government who sent all of these young men over to fight in all of these particular wars and, and things like that and come back traumatized, et cetera, like that. So we feel that uh, 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 it is also the duty of the American government to finance the solutions to it. Not just the non-veterans who's laying in the street. We feel that the starting point, make, make the, uh, uh, the homeless problem, the homeless veterans problem, get the American government to finance some think tanks where you can get some of the best minds in the United States, get them together, make the government pay for it, come up with some solutions, and then spread that solutions out to the rest of the, uh, the homeless in terms of solving that. Now what can the interfaith community do right now to make a dent in the homeless problem? Number one, 
I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Los Angeles because Los Angeles is the homeless capital. See, it's the homeless capital of the United States. Not only is this the homeless capital, you probably got more millionaires here in Los Angeles, kind of Los Angeles, uh, uh, probably anywhere else in the United States. But you also got the blight of people laying down there in the Skid Row area down there. So here's the, the second part of doing something right now. We feel that the three major religions, the re religious institutions, can also work with the city to find out all of these empty properties around here, to either buy these empty properties, rent these empty properties, <coughs> And start programming what the what the three what the uh, the prophet Muhammad what Moses and what Jesus taught. It's right there in the scripture. You know they started off uh, the Messiah Jesus when he announced his messiahship. It's tied into that in Isaiah on what they were supposed to be doing. You know working with people coming up out of prison, people in need, and all that kind of stuff. And Brother uh, uh, Umar, he mentioned, it's tied into the scripture of Islam, it's also tied into the scripture of, talk, of the Torah. See, so we feel that if these three major religions buy, rent some of this empty property, start programming, start picking some of the people up that's, that's on uh, 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 Skid Row, start bringing them into some of these houses, and at the same time provide support systems for them. See, I always felt that one of the major problems that you have in Skid Row, which is known also as the recovery zone because you got so many uh, substance abuse, different programs and stuff, is just an over influx of people that you got coming into that just overwhelm the services that's available to them. See, and another thing that people should also keep in mind about that is the whole concept of realignment that just added to the mess down in the Skid Row area. And what realignment is, is uh, 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 many of the nonviolent offenders that come up, that come up, that they're releasing from prison, right? Most of them end up where? In the Skid Row area. That just overwhelms the services that you have down there. Now, in relationship to housing, you also got situations where you might have housing like an SRO, where a person rent might be 68, 70, 80, a hundred dollars a month. Now, most of the people that come through Skid Row, you know, they don't have mental problems. They, a, a lot of their issues is tied into economics. It's tied into either they lost their job, they just getting out of prison, et cetera, like that. And when they end up in a skid, when they end up in a SRO housing over a period of time, why, if you're paying sixty-eight dollars a month, you're gonna leave there and go pay eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars a month? So what what happened here? You know, the, the ones that really need to service some of the mentally challenged people that should be in these SRO housing and stuff like that. They are the ones, you, you got normal people whose problem is only economic sitting in these SRO that should be used by people that actually need them. This is where I think the faith-based organization can help out, see? Because you got uh, people that need to be there, some of the mentally challenged people. They need to be around these resources. But you got other people who their problem is only a problem in economics, see? These are the ones in which, what, what I was talking about a little earlier, where if you got these churches of all kind of resources and money and stuff like that, if they just rent or buy a couple of houses and start putting people in and start programming these people, then not only would this, uh, it, uh, there's a possibility of bringing some of these people also into uh, their congregation, but you help uh, or relieve the influx of people that you got in that recovery zone that shouldn't be there at all, or should just be there for uh, the time to get a little train and move right on through. Another thing I would like to say, 
is I would like to talk about, uh, when it comes to homeless veterans, I would like to talk about an organization that I just found out about called the Vantage Veterans. Now the Vantage Veterans is an organization that's right across the border in um, uh, Mexico that's made up of honorably discharged veterans. And because they get out of the service, they honorably discharge, and they haven't had a chance to uh, uh, become American citizen, and then when they catch a felony, they're deported. See, now if we, to me, this is the ultimate part of being homeless. When you can have somebody who have served their country, get an honorable discharge, and then who have family and all that kind of stuff over here, and then because they catch a felony, which in, in many cases is tied into the trauma that they saw in Iraq and Afghanistan and places like that. Now they deported out of the, uh, the country. And what makes it so, such a shameful thing is to find out that the only way that they can come back over here is when they die. When they die, then they're eligible to come back over here and, and get the flag and and, and have the uh, honor bury and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, what I what, what I'd like to uh, uh, go into is nail heads. You know, I, I would like to because I, I I think nail nail heads. Let me tell you a little about nail heads. Nail heads a project that uh, was the idea of the compassionate group. Uh, 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 that Susan, Dr. Susan Stoffel uh, run over here at the Peace Center, where each one of the nails symbolized the 80 to 100,000 people that live on the streets of Los Angeles in the county of Los Angeles on uh, any given night. So at this time, I would like to do a, a short insert from Nail Head. population in the county of Los Angeles. And don't think the homeless problem is just a skid row problem. They are homeless all over the county of Los Angeles. Now you don't see the nails that's embedded into, in the foundations of the house. It's the same thing with those homeless that you don't see or hear about on the news. They escape your homeless county. These are the invisible homeless, the ones who live in their car or crash over to a friend's house. And sometimes they get sick and end up in the emergency room. And after a short stay without insurance, sometimes they get dumped on Skid Row. Now they dump us down here all the time on Skid Row. They dump us from prison. They dump us from the community beat down by life, looking for the American dream that became a nightmare. They dump us from other cities, looking for Hollywood and trying to be in anybody's show. Reality kicks in, and you end up on Skid Row. Why is he? And I'm a nail head. Now just like a nail, I've been hit on, bent, but not broken, and put in all kind of dark and tight spaces. Just like the homeless. I symbolize the homeless population. 
Foxes, birds, cats, and dogs, even they got a page. That's what made me mad. Dreams turned into nightmares, junkies stripping off the view. A view from one to four. One, one life-giving creative spirit. The oneness of all. In other words, we end this together. Two, duality, the dual nature of human beings. Two count of people in the recovery zone. Those that should be here with their support services, the others just passing through. Three, the three modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. The three major religions to spearhead the effort and form the four points of the compass. Universality, make it universal. I'm a nail head, strong as steel, the glue that holds things together. The foundation on which you stand, I'm a nail head and I'm homeless in my mind. Standing in place and marking time, an endless journey going nowhere, riding on a train going in circles. In the language of dreams, things are never what they seem. Are you one of a kind tripping off the view because you're homeless in your mind? Standing in place and marking time, homeless in the city of angels. Angels without mercy, it seems. You care more about your animals than your fellow human beings. At one time, the cats and dogs lived in the streets. And the boxes and alleyways were their home. Now, they flipped the script. The cats and dogs live in the houses, and the people live in the boxes and alleyways. How did that happen? Do you think it's right for the animals to live in the houses? and the people who live in the streets. All right. Yes, we have three million homeless people in our nation, the richest, most powerful nation in the history of the world. 500,000 of these women and children. We have the resources to do something about it. But what happens is we need the faith-based community mm -hmm. to work to make certain that the resources are put in place. All you need is a homeless commission in your church, no matter how large or small, a homeless commission. Then we come to Skid Row. Uh, we used to come once a month and bring a couple of hundred people, food, clothing, so forth, help to find jobs, going to corporations and asking if they would give so many interest level, uh, entry level jobs for the homeless, maybe 1% or half of 1% or something like that. Mm -hmm. If we really begin to care, we have the resources. Mm -hmm. A pawn could be simple, but the voice is really greater in the mix of time and the digging body A pawn could be simple, but the mix is really greater in the mix of time and the digging body A pawn could be simple, but the voice is really greater in the mix of time and the digging body A pawn could be simple, but the voice is really greater in the mix of time and the digging body A pawn could be simple, but the voice is really greater in the mix of time and the digging body A pawn could be simple, but the voice is really greater.